where did your relationship with Nori come in? Because this is an unlikely pairing. You know, <laughs> I, I know Nori is from up north, left Rack City. You're from Miami. But it feels right. like you guys have known each other for years. Like, where did that connection come in? He was uh, doing the promo tour for the CNN album. Okay. And, and you know, Pone was locked up during that. Yep. Uh, you know, Phil the Mayor and, and Headliner yep. Group and all these guys. So, they, you know, they were doing, they were the party guys even back then. And back then, you know, prior to really promoting on the internet, artists that were going to do a show in town would have to go do in-stores. I also had a store, a clothing store called Crazy Goods, uh, opened it in 97. And so they brought Nori to my store to do an in-store to promote the, the event that night. And I had a digital four track because that's what I was doing at that point. I had a four track where I would get freestyles from my mixtapes. For anybody who's watching, for anybody who's watching, I know what a digital four track is. Right. That technology is so antiquated. <laughs> yeah. Can you, can you explain just so that you're not talking over people's head? What, yeah, it, what it's like a, yeah, it's like a mobile little studio where you can put vocals and, and beats and all this stuff all in, in this mobile studio, basically. And I could take it around to different places and connect a mic to it, headphones, and record vocals and record tracks. So I had beats already on there. And when the artist would come over to, to the store, I'd you know, tell them to do a freestyle for my mixtapes. They brought Nori over. Gave him the mic. He started dropping freestyles. And, you know, we already, because I'm plugged into the underground, I'm a DJ, I'm, you know, we were already a big fans of CNN. Yep. Um, and so I'm just hyped that Nori's here, you know. And, and it, maybe it's his Latino side and, you know, and, 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 and a lot of us being Latino, but it just, we just clicked. Like, it just, the friendship was kind of instantaneous right there. And he went he left and then we were the first ones to bring him to do his first solo show in miami at the nre album really like yeah but i did it like not through him not through our friendship yet i went through violator you know violator management i did the whole process it was my first booking big booking as well so we did that first show for him and then when pone got out his management and his team hired me to do the whole event of the capone home event here in miami which is a huge party that we did during one of the conventions. And so we, we were doing so much at that time. And then he was practically on every mixtape after that. Like I said, we build this friendship that it was just automatic from that first time. And when he came for that first show, he, it was like, oh, shit. E. And it was like, for, you know, forever after that. Like he was, people would hit me up and be like, yo, uh, Nori just shouted you out on Hot 97. And, you know, we were advocating for him out here. And he was always, you know, bigging us up wherever he was at. And, and that friendship just, I don't know, it carried over. I couldn't even tell you because it is, it is weird even if, when I think and back on it. It's such a weird friendship. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not like Nori wasn't N-O-R-E. Like, no, no, yeah. Like, traveling <laughs> and he's meeting people every single day. Yeah, I don't, I, honestly, I don't get it either now that I think about it more. <laughs> but, you know, we, we were just cool. And every time I went to New York, I would check in and I would go to the studio and do stuff with them. So, after he did the, the reggaeton album, which I was never a fan of reggaeton. Like, I told him, like, you know, I'm, I'm just a hip-hop dude. Like, I don't know about the reggaeton stuff. And he knew that. I wasn't so much of a fan of it. So when he did the album, it did what it did. He kind of, you know, he kind of felt maybe that hip-hop turned their back on him after that album. Mm -hmm. So he, he was moving to Miami. And he said, look, I'm going to come to Miami. Um, I'm going to go. To, let's work in your studio. And I want you to bring me back to hip-hop. Really? Or less, you know, lose, you know, yeah, I'm paraphrasing whatever he told me, yeah, but yeah. he's like, you know, I know that, you know, that's where your space is at. Your headspace is just hip hop. You're a purist, you know, and let's go in your studio and let's just, just bring me back. And we came and we just started knocking out records and, and, you know, the press started coming and, and then out of those studio sessions, which he was in my studio, which was not too far from where I'm, I'm at now, I'm in my office that I moved from, he was damn near in there every day working, you know, um, and and in those sessions is where like the the joking of the of the of the slogan drink champs came from like if you got we were always drinking and stuff and he's smoking and and we would be can, like if you can, can you can you explain you just said in those sessions that's where the birth of the name drink champs come from elaborate right. right on that we're like that just comes out of the clear blue sky did somebody make that up and what did it mean at the time so it was something that 
my friends and I, we would just say it. If you, if you couldn't handle your liquor, you're not a drink champ. That's what we would say. You're not a drink champ. I'm a drink champ. You're not a drink champ. And then Nori, eventually he did a song produced by Alchemist called Drink Champ. Um, and so, but that's where it was. That's all it was, was a slogan. I thought it was dope. So I already started plotting on just having that, owning that slogan, owning that name before I knew what it would be. Wow. But in that, but, but in that same time frame, um, the homie Leo G came around and he's like, yo, y'all want your own show on, on Sirius? Okay, back up because a, a, yeah. a lot of the audience might not know who Leo, yeah. Leo G is at the time. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he was a program director at Sirius mm -hmm. before the merger. Sirius Shout out to Leo G, by the way. No, I'm lying. XM, my bad. XM. At he was XM. down in D.C. Yeah. And, and from what I remember, he was telling me that nobody, like everybody that, that was on XM had to be in the studio. I think we were one of the few that were allowed to send in our show. I might be wrong, but that's what I think he told me. But he's like, look, I'm going to give you all your own weekly show if you all want it. And we're like, yeah, let's do it. We're already in the studio every day. So Hold on. I, I, I'm, I'm confused because you just jumped over a piece of the story. I want to go back uh -huh. for a second. You're in the studio. You guys are drinking, doing whatever you do. You're not a drink champ if you can't hold your liquor, this, that, and the third. Now you're talking about Leo G offering you guys a show. But it has nothing to do with what the name show? Drink Champs. It has nothing to do with the name Drink Champs. I'm saying this is parallel stuff that comes together. But, but, but what show and why? He just He's like, <laughs> I don't, maybe because I'm a DJ and then he just thought, you know, everybody's always thought Nori was a character. Uh-huh. So, and so you um, guys and, are not doing quote unquote podcasts at the time? No, it wasn't yeah. even an idea. It wasn't even you know, a thought. This is 2008, maybe 2000. Yeah. 2008, 2009, potentially. So he gives us a show, weekly shows on Thursday nights. Nori named the show, which was a crazy name. Militainment Crazy Raw Radio. He wanted to include everybody's name. Militainment is his crew. Crazy is my crew. Uh, raw is 66 Raw, the station we were on, on XM. Uh -huh. So we did this show. And if you, there's some old footage on YouTube. If you, if you check on YouTube, it looks and sounds like Drink Champs. We drink in Tiger Bone. We announce ourselves the same way. We just don't say Drink Champs on it. And we, had, we didn't have many guests because we're like deep in South Miami. And it was not that many people were going to come down and check exactly. us out the show, you know? So, you, yeah, you guys are not even on a beach or nothing like that. Where are you at? Like in Kendall or something? Yeah, in Kendall. Exactly where wow. I'm at. In Kendall. Yeah. So we do this show for like three years. We were on XM. Then the merger happened. Uh, Sirius XM. We were on 66 Raw. We were on Hip Hop Nation. We were on Backspin. And we did it for like two or three years. We didn't get paid a dime for doing this. For us, it was just for fun to market ourselves. Cause we had the time. Um, Nori put out a CNN album and went on tour to Europe with, with Capone. And then I was managing a group called Mayday. They got signed to strange music, yep. tech nine in them. So we got busy and we both just didn't have the time to do it anymore. So we stopped doing it. So at the same time, all that's happening, the name drink champs is in my mind and we're still using it. It's still a thing that me and my friends say to each other. And I just thought it was dope. And I'm like, let me just see if anybody's, copywritten this or trademarked it or got the dot com or any of that nobody has this this is crazy <laughs> buy the dot com get the twitter get the ig get all of this trademark it all of that didn't know what i was going to do with it yet then another homie of mine locally he has a big gaming podcast always been a podcaster he tell he's always advocating to, for people to podcast he's like yo e, you should podcast maybe you and nori should do what you were doing as a podcast like a, po a podcast isn't a thing yet in hip hop. Mm -hmm. I tell Nori, he doesn't know what a podcast is. He's like, ah, I don't know what that is. Little bit, a couple, another year passes, and then uh, rest in peace, Combat Jack. But hit the company he was with, uh, I can't think of the name off top right now, but Loud they reached network. out. What is it? Loudspeaker Network. Loudspeakers Network, yeah. Yep. Shout out to them. They reach out for us to do, to do the podcast. Okay, so stop, stop there for a second. You, mm -hmm. Are you guys on serious at the moment no no we stopped doing that like i said we both got busy uh-huh we stopped doing it i wanted to try and do something like it but without the the like we the fact that we had to turn them in every week and it was a certain amount of time like i just didn't want all those all those restrictions on i just wanted to be more loose with it and my boys like with podcasting it doesn't have to be a certain amount of time you could put it out whenever you want that's the, how he's selling it to me and i'm like yo no we could do this whenever the fuck we want 
and potentially make a couple extra bucks while we do it and actually make money doing this one versus what we were doing before. So, so, so that's where we're at. the loudspeaker network reach out to you. Did they just remember your show? Like this is uh, so crazy because Leo G reaches out. It's not right. like you, you, you guys are even trying to be on the radio at that point. And he's like, yo, I'll give you a slot. Now you're in between, you know, your show with, with, with Sirius at the time. Right. You got time on your hands in, in loudspeaker network just reaches out out of the clear blue. I mean, it was a conversation. Nor I mean, look, everybody loves Nori. The people yep. that know Nori, everybody loves Nori. And, and so I feel like, you know, he's, he's blessed in the sense that people always want to see him win. They, 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 they think he's hilarious. They think that, you know, he could do more with, with his personality, which is what I believe as well. So I saw the, the future and what we could do with podcasting. So they I, reached I guess out. I I'm asking these questions. I'm sorry to cut in. Yeah. Because, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. And I believe, you know, I'm a man of faith. I believe everything is divine. You don't go through anything by accident. Anything that we go through, it is really to set you up for what's to come. Right. So it feels like the universe, God, whatever you believe in, was drawing you guys in this direction. Absolutely. Long before you even realized that this would be something that you would excel at. And we had to, the thing is, and you have to be ready to take advantage when it comes. I love that. I love that. That's, that's the thing. So everything is steering us in that direction. And I'm telling Nori, let's do it. He's not ready for years. We, uh, loudspeakers send, they send us equipment. I have to send it back because <laughs> Nori is not, he's just not ready to do this. He's not what ready. Mean to he's not ready. He's just like, yo, I'm not going to call an hour a week out of my town. Yeah. Look, yeah. I don't know. He just wasn't ready. <laughs> you know, Nori's Nori. What can I say? So, <laughs> I'm just like, all right, man, well, I'm not going to hold these people. I send the equipment back. I'm like, yo, my bad, man. He's not ready. Um, but I'm constantly telling him, Nori, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. I'm beating it over his head for at least a year or two, um, maybe longer. And then, you know, he does Tack Stone's show, and he realizes, he, you know, he sees like a street dude doing a podcast. Because everybody in hip-hop was kind of looking at podcasting like a nerd thing. Yep. It wasn't something that, you know, the cool guys did. Like, I, I, street guys don't do podcasting. That's some nerd computer shit. And I'm telling him, Lord, we can make some money doing this. Pro-. You know, I didn't know what potential we could make. But I'm like, hey, man, better than doing it for free, like what we were doing at Sirius <laughs> XM, and we're going to have fun doing it. So that was my goal. So finally, he does that show. He comes back to me. He's like, yo, E, I'm ready. I'm like, great. We don't have partners anymore that are ready. <laughs> <laughs> So my boy Godfrey, and shout out to him, his, his, his podcast is Gamer Tag Radio. Um, he gets a deal with CBS Radio. And then he tells me, yo, E, do you want me to make an introduction for you? And I'm like, yeah, let me talk to Nori. I said, what do you think, man? You want to try and do the, the podcast? And he's like, CBS Radio? That sounds big. Let's, let's, let's do it. <laughs> so I, I set up a meeting. And they said, you have to do pilot episodes for us to even consider it. Imagine that. So we do, uh, the first one is Kenny Anderson and Fat Joe, which Fat Joe ended up being our first episode we, ever, we released. We send them the, those two pilots, and they're like, this is great. Let's do it. Um, and then, and I'm kind of meshing some of the history, but so again, Drink Chance, I've, I've been holding it. Nori, we haven't really discussed the name much throughout this whole time, but I tell him, I'm like, look, man, I got this ready to go. At some point, I have my boy Scam do the logo. He's the guy that he's done stuff for Eminem done stuff for Tribe Called Quest, and he's, from, he's a Miami native, and he's my boy, and he's done work for me. So I had him do the logo, which is the logo that we have. I said, look, I got all this ready, man. Let's just call it Drink Champs. And Nori's like, when Nori's ready, he's, he's ready to run. He's you all know? in. He's all in. Yeah. So it was like CBS Radio, you got everything. Let's go, you know. And, and we did those, those pilot episodes. They released it, and the rest is history. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.